Should it be called reverse dieting or recovery dieting? In a recent study by Trexlers and others in 2017, they looked at both male and female physique competitors post-show over a four to six week period and looked at the physiological changes. Eric Helms reviewed this study in a recent mass issue and now we're gonna take a closer look at it with Eric's recommendations at the end. So now let's look at the subjects. We have seven bikini, two bodybuilders, five physique, and one figure. Andrea, if you're not figure, apologies, but you do look great in this picture. So now let's look at the study design. There were three testing periods, T1, which was within a week up to the competition, T2, one week post-show, and T3, between four to six weeks post-competition. And what they looked at was body composition, resting metabolic rate, they looked at hormones, body weight, water, and they also done a three-day food log on T1 and T3, and a one-day food log before the T2 testing. Now we're gonna be looking at the nutritional changes over the study period. In regards to calories, you can see from T1 to T2, it was an increase of 90%. T3, the calories dropped back down to around 30% of the T1 value. Protein stayed relatively stable throughout. Carbohydrates, there was a big spike in carbohydrates, over 100% from T1 to T2. And again, it went back down, but not quite levels of pre-competition because again, they're not dieting for a show anymore. Fat intake, again, threefold increase from T1 to T2 and then drop back down to 86 grams on average per day. Let's look at the body composition changes. As you would expect, body mass increased from T1, T2 and T3. However, body fat percentage didn't increase from T1 to T2. So that first week post show, there wasn't an increase in body fat. However, there was from T2 to T3. Fat mass, again, there was no significant difference between T1 and T2. Lean mass, again, there was a two kg roughly increase in lean mass between uh, competition and one week post show with uh, no difference between T2 and T3. And importantly, body water weight. They didn't measure it in T3, but they did measure it between competition and one week post show. And there was near enough a two litre increase in just body water weight. When we look at resting metabolic rate, again, competition, pre-competition, it was around 92%, it's predicted. Actual T2, so one week post-show, there was a 105.3% predicted, and then it dropped back down to 99.6% predicted. When we look at testosterone levels, again, there was a small increase from T1 to T2, and a much larger increase uh, four to six weeks post-show. From the results, it shows the importance of increasing calories post-show, not only to restore resting metabolic rate, but also hormones. However, there was a correlation between those which gained excessive amount of body fat more than others, and the rate of their testosterone levels restoring. I mean, if you put on too much fat too quickly, it will have a negative effect on your testosterone levels rebounding post-show. In conclusion, make the most of that initial post-competition. Cheers, Tom, for putting KFC up there. It's not as if I'm dieting or anything. But from this study, as we know, the weight regain is more than likely going to be due to increasing carbs and increasing the amount of water in your muscles. After that first initial phase, be a little bit more careful because if you go full YOLO and eat everything and put on excessive amount of fat, it will have a negative effect on your hormones um, restoring, especially testosterone. Eric Helms' recommendations are, after that initial night or day after, look at increasing body weight at a 0.5% increase per week for that four to six week period. So we should really call it recovery diet. And then once we get to the six week period, we should then look at reverse dieting. If you like this video, hit like, make sure you subscribe, and definitely check out Mass in the description below. And I've got a question. If you competed, how did you find post-competition?